The Red Sox are still very much in this thing. So why does it feel like they aren't? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin. As you can tell, we are very much in an away game today, so hopefully everything comes out okay on this video, and I apologize. Hopefully you guys can bear with me, but either way, the Boston Red Sox just won a series against the Texas Rangers, which now gives them three series wins out of their last four series. It also puts them at 63 and 56 on the season, seven games behind first place, and more importantly, two games back of a wild card spot. And like I just said, the Red Sox may have won this series but it just simply doesn't feel like it and that is a really big problem so what we are going to do in today's video is we're going to take a look at that we're going to take a look at this series why it feels more like a loss than it is a win and we're going to talk about what this means for the 2024 season thank you all very much for clicking on this one specifically this one and let's get into it Okay, so obviously I think we'll start with the good when we're talking about this series, and I think to talk about the good, we need to start by talking about the offense, and the interesting part with the offense in this one was that there really wasn't one major contributor to where the Red Sox ended up in this series. It was a really well put together team win, at least in the games that they did win offensively. There were a couple of pretty good performances though, starting with Romy Gonzalez who had a big moment in the finale when he roped an RBI double to give the Red Sox at the time what felt like a comfortable lead. Romy's really been everything the Red Sox have won out of a player in Romy's position, right? He's been the spark plug, he's been a versatile defender, He's been a guy who comes up big in clutch situations. That's exactly what you need from a guy like Romy Gonzalez. On top of that, he also had an RBI in every single game of this series. He's been absolutely cooking for the Red Sox lately. Rob Snyder, the silent leader of the Sox, had a really productive series. He obviously had the clutch walk-off hit that gave the Red Sox the win in the first game. Then he came through with a really clutch two RBI single in the middle game. We made a whole video about Rob's impact on that te- on this team. If you want to check it out, it's on my channel, but Rob has done so much to get the 2024 Red Sox to where they are. It's genuinely impressive how much he's impacted this team. Connor Wong is coming back to life a bit, which is a really good sign for the for the Sox. He had a home run, a double, and three RBIs in the second game. He scored a run in every single game, and he had at least one hit in two in two of the three games. In the absence of Tyler O'Neill, who is still on the IL, he was actually in the hospital for four days because of that leg infection. So we still got a little bit until O'Neill gets back. Connor Wong getting right at the plate is absolutely massive in balancing this lineup out. And overall. The offense is what gives me hope in this baseball team right now, right? This is the reason why I still have faith that this Red Sox team can do something with this season. This offense has been absolutely everything you could possibly ask for in an offense. I mean, they are the reason this team is winning games. They're the reason this team's been winning games. And in this series, they didn't score anything less than five runs a game. That's enough to win more baseball games than you lose right now. And for the offense, it's it's hard to find anything to complain about. We've been saying that same thing for what, the last two, three, four weeks? It's just the truth. There's not really anything here that we can complain about with the offense. Sure, you could go into Rafael Devers having a mini slump, but at the same time too, he's basically battling through a shoulder injury. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him on the IL today, which unfortunately I won't be able to make a video about, but keep an eye out for that. He looked like he was in a ton of pain last night. The only thing I could think of to complain about with this offense is that there was some really dumb base running in this series, specifically the last game by both Devers and Duran. Clean that up a little bit. They're in really good shape. I just, there's not really anything to say about this offense. And again, with the way this offense has looked that's what's making me believe in this Red Sox team however (laughs) however offense isn't the only thing that went down in this series and the pitching and the defense well that's an entirely different story but before we get into that story do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here I promise you we don't make videos in a shed every single day, but we do talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. It helps these videos out a ton, and it's the best way you can let me know you're enjoying the content we are putting out. Thank you all very much for taking a second to do it, so 
Let's break down some pitching. The most interesting part to me about this series is that we're going to probably go on a rant or two about this Red Sox pitching staff. But I don't know if I can include the rotation in this one because overall, they were really, really solid. It started with Brian Bayo, who really got back into form. This was the Brian Bayo we've been begging to see for a while now. He went six innings. He allowed just one earned run on just a couple of hits, and he struck out five. Still a decent amount of walks at three, but overall, you can't really ask for much more here. This is now his second start in a row that Brian Bayo's looked like the Brian Bayo that we know and love, and we've been talking about it for what I don't know months at this point basically since he came back from the IL at the beginning of the season if the Red Sox want to do anything in, in terms of competitiveness this year or anything and when it comes to October Brian Bayo is going to have to be a big part of that and to see him do it two games in a row to me is unbelievably encouraging I'm not pumped with the stat line that we got from Cutter Crawford because he ended up being five and a third innings he allowed four earned runs on three hits while striking out for but to be honest with you what I am happy about is the fact that he flat out did not deserve that stat line the only reason he has any sort of bad stat line in this series is because Cam Boozer came into a tight situation where he's supposed to get people out and he ended up walking like three people in a row and gave up a whole bunch of runs, right? And we're going to talk about the bullpen in a second don't you worry if you take out the runs that Cam Boozer allowed it's a really solid stat line for Cutter Crawford. And most importantly here, he didn't give up a home run. He has been giving up home runs left and right like they're candy on Halloween. This series, he didn't. He was actually able to keep the ball in the yard. This is the Cutter Crawford we've been looking for for the past couple of series. Hopefully, this is the turnaround start. I'm nervous that he's going to look at this thing and say, ah, I didn't do my job. Ah, this was a terrible ending to a really solid start. But at the same time, too, it's mostly on Cam Boozer. I, I understand he sort of fell apart in that sixth inning. He did allow a walk and a couple of hits, right? That was that was really the first inning anyone got any hits off a cutter. But at the same time, too, your bullpen should be able to pick you up when you have a start like that and a finish like that. So I've been super worried about Cutter Crawford. This start made me feel a little bit better. Tanner Houck finished off this series, and I got to tell you, I, I, the stat line looks good. We'll get into something else in a second. He ended up going six and two thirds innings. He only allowed two earned runs on six hits, but he only struck out three. Tanner may end up just sort of being that con pitch to contact type hitter, that guy who's going to rely heavily on his defense to try and get some wins. And that to me is absolutely terrifying. It's not because he can't get guys out. It's because of the fact that his stuff is just flat out diminishing as the season rolls on. And I'm worried as to what that stuff's going to look like come late September where they're trying to push towards a playoff spot. So that's what I mean when I say the stat line looked good, but there's definitely some things there that are a bit concerning. But overall, again, you look at the starting pitching and when was the last time this Red Sox team got three really good starting pitches? pitching outings in a row. It's been a pretty long time. It's been probably at least a couple of series, if not a few weeks here, since we can come out of a series and say, yeah, the, every single one of the starters for this Boston Red Sox team did their job. So I have nothing to complain about with this rotation. The same cannot be said for this Red Sox bullpen. I am going to leave two people out of this rant. I'm going to leave Kenley Jansen, who came on twice and gave you four outs both times to try and get yourselves a win. I'm going to leave out Chris Martin, who did his job in this series, but every other person in this bullpen gave up runs in this series. It was, I mean, every single one. It was crazy. The entire bullpen had a flat out meltdown in this series. They're lucky that the Red Sox offense is one of the best in Major League Baseball. The only reason this team won this series is because of this offense. We should be having a much more negative video, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for the offense of this team. This should be a video about how the Red Sox lost two out of three. Every single time they give the ball from the sixth inning to the ninth inning, 
anything. They are score. The other team is scoring runs. It happened every single game in this series. It's happened every single game in the other series. And I don't know what the solution is because it feels like every single person in this bullpen is guilty. Luis Garcia looks like he doesn't even remember how to pitch a baseball. Cam Boozer couldn't find the strike zone. Now he's on the IL with elbow inflammation. Josh Winkowski came in here because Alex Cora said, oh, this is a guy who throws strikes. Yeah, he threw a strike, a non-moving curveball that was the difference between you losing the game and you winning the game. Chris Martin should have been in there for four outs, and I love Alex Cora, but this is the, really one of the only times I'm going to entirely disagree with him on. I understand that Chris Martin just came back from the IL, and you don't want to push him, but he could have gotten more than in and out in that last game of this series. You just you need to start clicking the right buttons because right now the buttons you're clicking just simply aren't working, and there's only so many home runs that that Zach Kelly can give up before I say, okay, well, wait a second here. Is there something going on with Zach Kelly? And I love Zach Kelly. I'm a huge Zach Kelly fan, but man, does he know how to give up a home run. And he continued to do that. Yes, Alex Cora probably should have left Chris Martin in this game, but there's only so many home runs Alex Cora can prevent. At some point, we need to look at this bullpen and say, what are you guys doing wrong? I don't know if it's going to take a full switch up of the middle guys in this bullpen, right? Lucas Sims actually looked pretty solid in this series, so I'm going to put him in the category of Kenley and Chris Martin as well, but everyone else, man, is there a way to solve what is going on? Is it simply overexposed and un overworked, or is it something different? Is it a philosophy here with this pitching staff that just simply isn't working? Our team's realizing, hey, if I just sit on the slider, he's probably not going to throw me a fastball. At some point, he's not going to spin it the way he needs to. Is it something along the lines of, man, I just can't get a grip on these baseballs lately. What is going on in this bullpen? Because right now, they are the reason they are not going to make the postseason. They are the reason this team is not going to find the success that they want to find. If it, if it hasn't blocked them already, yes, this series was a win. Yes, it's hard for me to sit here and complain about this series because they won it. But at the same time, too, they had a difficult time closing out games against the under 500 Rangers. You're your next 10 games are against the Orioles, who you are 1-5 against, the Astros, who swept you, and the Arizona Diamondbacks, who are the hottest team in Major League Baseball. You got to figure something out here, or you are going to be in a world of hurt when you try and get from the 6th to the ninth inning against guys like Gunnar Henderson, Jordan Alvarez, and Corbin Carroll. It is going to be a big old problem, and I got to be fair to the bullpen for sure the defense in the last game of this series did not help them win they were atrocious right there were two errors one from Duran one from Hamilton but at the same time too there could have been a couple other ones mostly you know the say Don you couldn't turn it in the last what couple of innings here I would say that has a lot more to do with the fact that he's playing both center field and shortstop in the same game yet Rafi not be able to make a decision on a double play that should have been made there are mental mistakes all over this defense right now and it's abysmal they have so many unearned runs they've 71 unearned runs on the season that's more than like nine or ten more than the next closest team you want to point to a reason why the Red Sox won't make the playoffs you could sure as hell point to defense and inability figure out the middle innings of this game the middle to late innings of a series and it scares the absolute hell out of me the Red Sox need to figure out a way to get themselves back on track when it comes to defense and when it comes to bullpen pitching. I don't know what the solution is because it feels like the solution is simply be better, right? There's not really much the front office can do. Maybe there's a philosophy tweak that the coaching staff could do, but at the end of the day, it feels like it's just these players. It feels like these guys need to sit down, huddle up, and say, what the hell are we doing out there? We have to be better than this and being better. That's the only thing I could think of. So overall, yes, they won this series. Yes, they keep themselves in contention. At the end of the day, 
That's what really matters here is the W's in the win column. So I, I, I hate ranting about this team after they win these games. It's just there's a couple of things here going into a really, really, really important stretch of the season that absolutely scare the daylights out of me. But that's just my opinion. So maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I'm overreacting. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Again, it helps these videos out a ton. It's the best way you can let me know you're enjoying the content we are putting out. Again, I apologize for another away game here. I promise you it's probably going to be the last one of the 2024 season. I really thank you guys for bearing with me. I thank you all for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.